Hey guys, welcome to another week of What Women Binge. And we've got one of my favorite women here. We've got Soleil Moonfry. Yay! Finally! I, I love that this is how I get to catch up with you because I miss you <laughs> so much all the time. So, oh, come on. We did a 45 minute phone call the other night. You can't even. Exactly. We, we did it quite was a catch so up. Much fun. It was, but it it was is. very old. It was very teenage of us. <laughs> we were on the phone like all night. Like, no, you hang up. No, you hang up. That's so cute. How we long have you been friends? with each other on the phone? It was great. It was perfect. <laughs> we, uh, long- Amanda just asked how long we've been friends. So we think we, we met at the Punky Brewster audition. Yes. Oh my gosh. Um, we were like long- six or seven. Yeah, we were little. And I don't know if Soleil remembers it as much as I do, because of course she got the part. So I remember watching that show and being like, that's my friend. Like I, like I met her. I know her. That's my friend. You know, and so I that was. We had so much fun. And like, I feel like we were walking around with balloons or something. I just, I, <laughs> I just have always loved Melissa is such a incredible, just beautiful, amazing, authentic, just super <laughs> hero. I just, I love her so much. And she's oh, always 100% agree. true to who she is. And that Aww. is just always awe inspiring so to sweet. me. We, we have to tell the story about like what I think happened at that audition and what you think happened. Well, so, Uh-oh. so, so I, so I flew out to LA for a screen test. So it was like between like me, Soleil and maybe one or two other people, right? Like for oh the part, goodness. I think there was just a small group of us and we were all going in to test for the network and we're all waiting in the waiting room. Like you have to wait like all day for these and they're super nerve wracking and whatever, but we're kids, you know, but whenever, okay. So wait, so like you tell the story about the elevator. Oh, well, I, <laughs> I got into the elevator and someone said that they had already gotten the part. And so my mom oh. took me to leave and um, I was like, I'm still going to go in there. And, and so, but there was a moment where my mom was like, okay, honey, let's go, you know? And um, that was what I remember from like the last network test or something, or one of the last network tests. And I was like, oh, I'm just, I, I'm going for it. <laughs> Wait, that was before Not the audition? I thought it was me. after. I thought it was leaving. Before the audition. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Yeah. Well, and then I and found I out thinking- years later that, like, somebody was, like, calling the – there was a lot of wild, a lot of wildness for such – It was weird. It was amazing. Kid. That whole um, experience of trying to screen test for something is absolutely insane. You have to sign a contract before you even audition just to say, this is what your deal is going to be for the run of the show. Like, you have to know what you're going to get paid, what your deal is going to be, what kind of trailer you're going to – like, all those things are already negotiated before you audition for the last audition. Yeah. So it's like you already have to have gone through all the negotiation. Like, it's insane. And, of course, we're kids. But what's funny is when she told me that story, I think we were on, like, the news or something, and someone asked us that question. You you said that – you told that story, and I went, oh. <gasps> That might have been me only because when we used to leave an audition, my mom used to say, did you get it or not? And I would have to guesstimate, did I get it or not? And so, I'm, I mean, it's very likely that she would have been like, so, and I would have been like, I think I got it, you know, like, so. I so you but never I, told me that. You never told me that. Look at the things that you discover on this podcast. I never knew time. Time. You, <laughs> but I can't you never told me that story. But I don't think I would do that in front of another person. Was I, it you? I would have done it. little girl. I, I don't do think was it was seven. You might that. have. I, I know. You I know. might not have been aware of my surroundings. I might have just been like flustered from the well, whole see, experience. And been, like I think I got also, it. But, but here's the thing, right? Perception. It's like I'm always constantly at awe, of, especially with the experience of doing Kid Ninety and going through all the videotapes. And going like, wow, it's so interesting. So, so often we have these blind, you know, these <laughs> blinders on and see things through one perspective, right? So this adorable little girl could have been like, yeah, mom, I think I got it. You know, and totally not even been aware. And in my little mind, like, and I'm like, else is okay, there. I'm still yeah. going to go in. And then in my mom's mind, it could have been like, okay, let's go. You know, so it's, right. and you know, it's just so interesting. It, it's, it's like sliding like doors, world. right? Yes, Isn't it like exactly. sliding doors? Yes. And the weird thing is like, I always, I have very bad intuition about things. So when I would be like, I don't think I got it. That's when I would get a job. So if I did say it, it would make sense that I didn't, you know what I mean? Like, so oh, it's, really? yeah, I always have the wrong. Um, and, and it's always when you're like, ah, like, I wonder if you so like going in there being like, well, someone else already got it. I might as well just throw it into the, you know, like, right. let me just do and what I, I want to do. It. I actually think you have an incredible intuition because you are so in tune with 
kind people with with what is authentic to yourself. So I would say you have amazing intuition. And uh, oh, that's, that's, my, little, that's, that's like I'm my little, that I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I feel like I have to peel back layers though, in a way, but. You're always, um, your PS like is amazing. Like, like if you are like, you know, like <laughs> Melissa should be the one that you take friends, potential husbands, wives in front of, <laughs> like, or. Be like, I don't know. I don't like, know how that's worked out for us, Soleil. Like, eh. Uh, <laughs> or, yeah, well, and Soleil is responsible. Like Amanda, I don't know if you know, but like Soleil is responsible for a few things in my life. Um, she's responsible for the first house I had as a married woman. She's responsible for the place I got married at. So All there's right. like, there's some. I mean, when Soleil, I is knew like, you guys you went to, deep. The roots are deep. Oh, so. when she's like, you have to see this place in Italy, and then I go get married there. Oh, you have to buy this house, and then I buy that house. Like, you know, she's talking about intuition. Sure she's in like. <laughs> Hey. Yeah, no, but like, you know, like, you know, like where so you like feel like the, it's almost like, what is it? Like feng shui or something like, you know, when someone needs to be here. <laughs> I don't this think is that's where you need to be. <laughs> I figure when I really love something, you'll love it too. <laughs> that's true. That is true. And that's it what friends so do, right? It is interesting you say that because there are so many times in just normal everyday conversations, she'd be like, oh my gosh, Soleil would love this. And <laughs> or she'll be like, this is just like in Soleil's house or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting. Y'all are true. connected. Soleil always has, as you can see, Soleil Melissa Soleil loves like me, the Bali chic. Oh, she's like white walls, white floors, the Buddhas. It's <laughs> fascinating to me. She has four kids. How do you have white? Every like, look at your room right now. Oh. White everything. You're the opposite of Amanda. Amanda is like pink I and am. green and purple and like sparkle. <laughs> and Soleil is like, I only wear black <laughs> and I only have my house white. <laughs> It's like monochromatic and then like color explosion. The two but of when you. your brain, oh, like oh. I think of it as some of the most creative people I know, their brains are so colorful and so active that when they're in a space, they need it to be just monotone. <laughs> I would say that's useful. A, a lot of colorful, a lot of colorful children. So <laughs> that, that does it for one. I could like, I, I definitely could not have a white sofa with all the millions of children and animals yeah, in my house. You guys see what's happening right now. This is like a sliver of it. If you saw the rest <laughs> no, of but like her drapes are white, her floors I would say, are white. I don't even think we have covers. Like it's not, even. It's, it's, but you explained it to me so well. So like you go, I just bleach everything. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's brilliant. That is you just bleach everything. Like that just makes sense. That's what hotels do. That's what, you know. Yeah, you have all these weird Just people come The only reason that this bed is gray is because I bought myself a weighted blanket so I could sleep at oh, night. Oh, nice. Walmart, so, a Walmart special, 12 pound weighted blanket. Hey, you yeah. do what you got to do. Mm hmm. Hotel My living right now in West Virginia. Virginia so, dog. you know, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm still in West Virginia, like living, living the dream on a uh, true crime movie. We're now calling it The Bad Guardian. So that's official. So the movie I'm on is Are called you The Bad the Guardian. Guardian? Are you the guardian? No, I'm the one trying to save my father from the guardian. So he falls in an accident, oh. ends up in a hospital. They take him guardian, like a guardian moves in and like takes control of him and his life. Mm. So it's like, wow. Mm. Chaos. It's actually very intriguing. Yeah, it's a very intriguing story. Wait, but Soleil, we got to go back. Okay, so so yeah. we met when we were little girls, right? So I'm yes. Punky Brewster. Then you go and do Punky Brewster. Amazing show. Everyone's freaking obsessed with it, right? It like changes culture, especially for little girls. And I want to talk for about sure. that. But like our our kind of story goes then... I saw you at like a youth and film award. We did like a, like a kids award show yeah. thing together. And you were like the cool girl. You knew everybody, like everyone's stirring around you. And I'm oh, like, I don't know. Yeah. I kind of like hung out with you. What was the kid's name from Terminator that you were so close with? Eddie like, Furlong. <laughs> yes. Eddie Furlong. We're like hanging out with him and like all these, and she's got all the boys around her. And I'm like, I want to be in her soleil. She's like boy crazy. Like me. <laughs> And then we I mean, some things um, never change, Melissa. You know, <laughs> something's never changed, Soleil. <laughs> um, I know I love it. Let's um, be honest. I can say that now. <laughs> you can. I can't. My husband's just over there. So oh, <laughs> and mine's on the other yeah, side of the screen. You can live vicariously. <laughs> you can live vicariously for me. <laughs> um, yeah, no, hotel living with my husband. So yeah, he's right there. But yeah, I am still boy crazy. And but Soleil gets to be boy crazy now. But, um, but so we, so, okay. So I'm doing Sabrina, you were, um, married and living like this fabulous life in the, in the Hills. 
And um, how do we become friends? Because of the 70s show cast? Do, how do we like connect well, again? We connected. I, we bumped so into Ashton each other somewhere and we were Ashton's in separate house. In the moment. Probably. I think we were at Ashton Kutcher. Didn't Ashton have like a, a Thursday night pool party or so, like pool table? Like I, Who knows? There was lots of pool parties. There was lots of fun. Lots um, of fun. And we met. That's true. It was a social. We were social crazy. We instantly like, were inseparable. You know, and we yeah. were. It, it's so wild because, you know, I feel like we lived so much life so young. You know, I, I got when I got married, I had just turned 22. So, mm. you know, like my, th those years where we were all, you know, having so much fun together and playing and just having a great time. And, and also like, it was wild because I feel like in a way, like I also, like, it was like this juxtaposition because there was like the grown up me, like, you know what I mean? It was just wild. And then there was like Melissa and I having the best time of our lives. So I was about, we were about 23 because we're like exactly the same age. We were 23 when when we kind of started hanging out again. And do you know that 23 is the year I say I like was a really bad girl? <laughs> like, maybe I can blame it all on you. <laughs> well, this is the no thing way. is that no. I had to live vicariously. Like, this is the thing. I had to live vicariously like, through you at that time. Oh, that's because well, I was single. She's married. Mm -hmm. But her husband, your husband became like my protector. Like you guys yeah. were like my team. Like he like would watch the two of us on like red carpets and at parties and he'd kind of like pull us both. I feel like he'd like kind of almost like grab us by the shirt and be like, get back here. We're not doing that. You know, ah, we're not going over there. We're not dancing real. that. We're not having another drink. He was very, he was very protective and sweet. He was our bouncer. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was so but yeah, so we had a lot of fun. And then I was like, she's got to be on Sabrina. And we were, we were casting for the, um, the, the college years. So Sabrina's going to move out of the house and have a whole new set of roommates and so she came on. You came on as Roxy. Oh, and it was a dream seasons, right? come true. Three, four. Yes. How many? So it was fun. so much fun. So much fun. Was it three, four? I can't Something remember. Something like that. Working with your best friend and being able to have so much fun. And I just remember that time being so uh, inspiring and fun and wonderful and full of like self-exploration and we would ride scooters around the lot and <laughs> over to Larchmont. Oh my God. I, Lunch so every day, party fun. every night, try to totally. remember our lines the next day. Wait, but I remember like, like, oh, okay, it's fine. We can memorize them in the morning. <laughs> so I remember like, what's funny is there were times when you would get the giggles so bad and like, oh sometimes I go along with it, but a lot of time I just be like, I want to get done with work. So I remember one time, I don't know if I ever told you this. I like pretended to lose my crap on set. I was like, I can't do this anymore. And I like walked off set. And one of the like PAs came after me and was like, are, are you okay? Like, can we get you back on set? And I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm just giving Soleil a moment to calm down. I want her to think I'm mad because <laughs> I was like trying to get you to stop laughing. <laughs> I don't know if I ever told you that you were laughing so yeah. hard in this one scene. And I was like, she will not stop. So I was like, that's it. I can't do this. And I like stormed off and like went to my trailer and they're like, yeah, the and things like, no, I can't know. <laughs> the things hilarious. I will tell you today. Right. <laughs> but yeah. So I don't know if you knew that, but I was like, literally this poor PA or second AD or whatever came knocked on the door. was like, <laughs> Melissa. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. I promise. I'm going to come back in and just like give Soleil like one minute to calm down. <laughs> Well, it was a very giggly set. It was just so much it fun is the thing. And and um, yeah, it was so much fun. And it was so fun to be a WB girl. Like that was so fun, right? Oh, like, yeah. Those, like, campaigns where you did like the hair toss and stuff. Like, yeah. Oh. Black and white sexy photos. And yeah, because yeah, it was like Dawson's Did Creek. You? And like I want to say yeah. like, uh, was, like all this sexy like. WB was like the place to be as a Y. It was like a YA channel at the time before they called it that, right? Totally. It was yeah. so, it was a really fun time with really, really amazing, fun people. And I think also there was a, a, a sense of innocence to it, you know, because as much as we were having fun and being wild and I mean, our being wild was really, I mean, literally it was, it was quite innocent in a lot of ways. Really and I think um, so much happened in the following years of, of, this roller coaster of emotions and what friends and loved ones, you know, went through um, after that. So I, I really remember that time as like this pinnacle of joy and innocence. You know what I mean? Um, before yeah. maybe well, before we had kids, but we were like, yeah, like and before like the layers of the onion peeled back into like 
a different level of adult. But well, I can tell you that I'm looking at 2024 with 2020 20, 20 vision. I can see it ahead of let me. me. Let me guess why. Let me guess why you have 2020. One guess. Is it because of pair eyewear? <gasps> You're so Am I right? Smart. You're just so Because look, I'm wearing my pair eyewear right yes, now. Yes, you are. It brings everything into focus, right? And pair eyewear base frames start at just $60, including your prescription. Isn't that so cool? And then $25 and you get these face plates that you just pop right on. You can change get your look. Affordable progressive lenses and you can save by using pre-tax FSA and HSA dollars. It's so cool. They Plus, are so great. you can great. get 15% off by using our code BINGE, B-I-N-G-E, at PairEyewear.com. So go get your glasses, your husband's glasses, your kid's glasses, your progressive lenses. And can we talk about how cute they are? Like, oh, So you, you get the base frame, and then you pop on the top frames, and the top frames just have all different kinds of designs, collections, collabs, anything you might want. And they have free standard shipping and a flexible 30-day return policy. So if you don't like it, which I guarantee you, you're going to like it. But if you don't, for some reason, you're going to love it. You can send it back. And it includes wide frames to fit every face and find your fit right from home with a virtual try on, which you That's can do. That's how I did it. It makes you look cute. Yeah. Hi, made sure. You find the ones that you like the best. We both dig the cat eye look. Yes, personally. Did. We did. So visualize a fantastic new year with Pear Eyewear. That's right. Go to PearEyewear.com and use the code BINGE, B-I-N-G-E, for 15% off your first pair. And support our show by mentioning what Women Binge sent you in the post-checkout survey. Yes, please mention us. That's pair, P-A-I-R, eyewear.com, code BINGE. It was really innocent. It's true. We were going out to like, I owned a bar on Sunset Boulevard, and we would spend most of our nights there, really. Or like Wait, a different yeah, you owned a bar? Or we could go to New York. We owned a bar on Sunset Sunday. for like 20 One years. One of the best experiences was when what? we lived. What? Sorry, I missed what you say. She I, owned I, a I bar on Sunset Boulevard. Yeah, I was a part was owner in the Trocadero Sunset Lounge, which was like an ancient, like historic um, bar and in did you Hollywood. Still own it? No, I, you know, I went there recently and I was like, do I still own this? And they're like, no, you don't. And I was like, okay, good to know. <laughs> I was like, because I haven't been getting participation checks. I just wondered. But um, it's, it was like, I was like a partial owner, but what's crazy about it, but I, the great part was I got 50% off all food and, and booze and I threw parties. Like Soleil, we threw a Soleil a birthday party there. I had birthday parties there. Every time Basically, I directed it. She just wanted there. the discount um, for all of her friends to be able to party there. And but free parking on Sunset. Free parking on Sunset, which is like 30 bucks a night. Like but Also, one of my favorite memories is when Melissa and I went to live in New York for a period and it was so much fun. We had yeah. the most fun in New we York. We were such brats. Like we, we went to karaoke and ate caviar for dinner almost every night. Like who does that? Well, I don't know who was paying for the caviar because I, I definitely wasn't. We might have found some boys to pay for it. I'm not sure. I'll go check probably, my credit card. You probably found some people. It was the, the heyday of television. I mean, I, at the point I was like, ah, caviar. It's just me. Like a, I bought a house and then like, what else? Like I had a car. I didn't eat anything else. I'm like oh, caviar for dinner. Went through a caviar sure, phase yeah. for sure. Here we know, go. The 25 year old Amanda didn't know oh. what caviar was. Uh, <laughs> I wish I had had an appreciation like I do now for it. My God. Well, we just had caviar soleil like not too long ago in New York City at the plaza. Didn't we just have like a whole like that tea was, that was a big at the plaza? Yeah, we we Yes, that was you went ahead that you bought that round. You were like champagne and caviar, and me and your daughter and my sister, and we're like eating caviar and tea sandwiches, and like you and me that and Trisha like, like dream, dream personally. Dream, dream. It was. We were having some fun in. New we always have fun in New York. We just need to like you know my like whole plan about like when I'm an old lady, I'm gonna live in New York City and I'm gonna smoke my my Parliament lights and I'm gonna have a small dog. I know Amanda doesn't like it when I say I'm gonna smoke, but I'm so gonna smoke. I'm gonna after seventy. I'm going to go back to smoking, fur coat, small dog, you know, doorman that carries up my D'Agostinos for me up to my apartment and yes, just go to the theater. Fabulous. Right? I'm going to go to the theater and the Met and the, like, ballet. I, will, and, I support all of this except for the smoking part. You're all coming with me. I'll just, I'll just step outside for my cigarettes <laughs> on my strolls through Central Park. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> I want to go on the stroll, but I don't want, like... Your okay, you can hand. go. You just stand on the left side. I smoke on the right. I'm good. <laughs> Wait, let's you know, go back I to. Love um, it. I, I love it. I wanted to go back to um, Punky. Tell us. Okay, 
So just to, cause we want to get to like what you binge, what you like, but um, tell us like your favorite episode of Punky. Like tell us like your favorite, like memory or favorite episode. Oh, I have so many favorite memories from Punky really. <laughs> oh, it was like playing make believe every day. And yeah. so many of and my memories are close. around the amazing people and being part of this incredible family and, and, punky being such a part of me and the punky power within me and the way in which I got to meet people that connected to punky, you know, so, so many of my memories are that joy, you know? Um, and then of course, episodes that I love. I mean, there are just the episodes that of course, like stand out so much to me from the episode, um, around the challenger. I had always wanted to be an astronaut. Um, and that was a, such an intense experience. And, and the fact that we were able to um, do um, an episode around it, Cherry getting stuck in the refrigerator, of course, and then That's seeing my the way favorite you one. touch people. I mean, yeah. I have favorite um, episodes, the first episodes. And of course, I mean, Andy Gibb, who was just, you know, one of the first true loves of my life. And, uh, and you've had a lot. Kind of, he, I, well, he really, he really, he really got in there. Um, you know, <laughs> one of the things about about Andy was um, just his 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 love and and how giving and loving he was. And you watch, I, I, I love when he sings to me in in, and he did two episodes actually. Um, but when he sings to me, like you can see, I love that you can actually see me falling in love as a little girl, like on camera, that that like piece of film actually exists. Um, what it also taught me though, is, is, you know, how the kindness of, of people, the kindness of, of people, how it, it touches our lives and how it sticks with us forever. You know, I, I look back at those moments with, with, with him and, with George Gaines and, you know, the people that were a part of that show. And it's just that incredible kindness that was shown to me has stuck with me forever, you know? Um, so, so many of my favorite episodes are tied to these moments with these amazing figures, you know, Marvin Hagler coming on. I was thinking the other day about like DeBarge coming on. I mean, just, you know, we had such amazing, um, amazing people that were a part of it that, that really left their imprint on my heart, you know. Yeah. That's amazing. And I you're think still, and you, was right. And that that yeah, show just just say no episode. I mean, come on. I mean, there's so many uh classics. I, I I know that a big one for people that has haunted them for their entire lives is the cave where we're stuck in a cave, you know. I mean there's just so many wild oh, yeah. gosh. Yes. My brother came and did an episode. I mean just yeah it was it was and everyone so was wearing two different shoes, right? Or isn't it like <laughs> Oh my goodness. Including yes. your daughters. Oh your daughters. Oh, the episode where I turned into like an 88 year old woman. You know, what was so interesting about the show is that the creators would see what was going on in life and then they would really create episodes around it. So yeah. one of my fears as a little girl was like growing old alone, you know, and then they did an entire episode about like facing your fear, you know. Um, and, and so it's just very interesting how they would see what was going on in our lives and then build these really powerful episodes around it. Mm. And, and, and you guys did a reboot on Peacock which yes, uh, year or two, I love. two years ago. Thank you. It was you. great. Oh, so it was much really fun. Good. Oh, I, I'm it so was Freddie proud Prince of Jr. As your, is it Freddie Prince was your ex, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And, yes. And, and, and like, and Lauren Donzis, we shared a daughter. Oh my, yes. We shared a daughter. I forgot your daughter. On on oh. on Punky Reboot was my daughter in No Good Nick on Netflix. So that's crazy. Yeah, she's, she's such a such great a actress. Fantastic, fantastic cast, fantastic team. Like it just was such a special moment in time. And it was so incredible because we were shooting it. And I also was going through so much personally um, in, in my life with my family, you know, changing so much. Um, and at the same time was working on my documentary and it was like Punky came back to me in that moment that I needed her most, you know, as again, that like superpower. And I literally feel like that is so much of how I got through the last years of my life was that that Punky power within me was like, 
back in such a strong way. Um, and, and it was just interesting, you know, art imitating life, life imitating yeah. art, you know? Yeah. Um, and, so and, you, and so like, wait, let's, so let's now stop at Sabrina again. What was your favorite like memory and, um, or episode of that? Oh, every memory with you, Melly. <laughs> Melly, oh, there were we so many fun episodes. I really, every time I think about it, I think about, it's funny. I think about it in, there's so many fun moments. I loved our scenes when we got to be like in the room together and like, it was fun because I played like a more edgy character and, you know, our dynamic, those moments like always stand out so like full of like just wonderful fun and um, and, uh, and I loved our clothes. Like it was so fun to be able to dress oh, up in great clothes. You know, I feel like yours were more fun than mine. Out this one day. And oh, we were the cheerleaders. Like, one of us had like, I feel like one of us had like shells as a bikini top or something like <laughs> wild, like, you know, and just oh my to gosh. be like, <laughs> what was the episode we did at the beach, um, oh, beach, beach blanket bingo or whatever. Yes, and it, we were I in like those fifties, like we, we had gone back in time. Yes, we're in like the fifties, like with Aaron and Aaron and Carter. Was in, yes, yeah, Aaron the beach, Carter was in beach it. That was there. definitely that was definitely one of my favorite episodes for sure. The that beach was a bingo. great one. We had so much fun. We made, we giggled so hard. There's a scene where these girls are doing our hair. You, me, and Elisa are sitting on the on the bed, yeah. and these girls are doing our hair. And the lines were so silly that there's an outtake somewhere that I'll have to find someday. I'll find it, and post it. But like, the outtake is like we made it very naughty. Remember? We like said all these awful naughty things instead you of like never. We did this. We did the version, but we couldn't stop laughing. I think the director was like, "Can we get this done?" And we were like, "Can we just do the version we want to do?" And like we said like really naughty um, things, and then we got that out of our system, and then we went on. Yeah, I know. I I made it. Yeah, I went the over the line. Bingo was, I definitely, the beach. The beach bingo is definitely, I think, one of the highlight episodes. For it was just really cold. Know. We always shot these scenes in Malibu in January, so where you wouldn't. But it was so cool. Malibu, we had the beach cold, location. But, it was so it was fun. The brain says that's season five, episode 17, if anybody's looking for it. It's episode Beach Blanket 17. Bizarro. Bizarro, that's oh, right. Because Beach Blanket Bigger would be the real. Bizarro. Yeah, because I think so, uh, like my magic somehow takes us back in time and we're like stuck in the 50s and... Yeah. Oh my God. I want to go back that and watch so that fun. one. So bad. Melissa, I mean, why, we've got, what's happening? When is the Sabrina continuation happening? I you keep mean, asking. I mean, it's the question I get the most, and it's like we can't. Like the uh, the answer is red tape. Like who owns it? Right. Why? Who? And do they want to? You know, it's not. Uh, it's not going to happen. Right. But right. um, but it's too bad because it would be fun. But I'm okay. We need. It's all right. So Amanda, you know, like resolutions have come and gone at this point, and a lot of them have dwindled down. Well, one of mine was to do less takeout and to cook at home more. But of course, you know, I haven't really been that consistent. Yeah, me neither. I was right there with you and uh, not now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, who has the time or the patience to meal prep and grocery shop? So I was very excited to learn about Home Chef. Yes, I am so excited about Home Chef because they're different from all the other meal kit brands. Yes, Home Chef provides fresh ingredients and chef-designed recipes conveniently delivered to your doorstep, and it simplifies the whole cooking process. Yeah, so whether you prefer classic meal kits with pre-portioned ingredients and easy instructions or speedy recipes ready in less than 30 minutes, I do like those, mm -hmm. oven-ready kits with pre-chopped ingredients, quick microwave meals that assemble in minutes, Home Chef has you and the entire family covered for delicious meals without the hassle. Yeah, and Home Chef has over 30 options every week, so it makes it really easy to serve a variety of different dietary needs, and you don't have to worry about what to make ahead of time. It's just there. Yeah, it's convenient. It's economical, too. Home Chef customers save an average of 86 per month on groceries. That's, That's $86, really by the way. $86 a, a month on groceries. <laughs> That's a lot of money. For a limited time, Home Chef is offering our listeners 18 free meals plus free shipping on your first box and... Free dessert for life. I'm you sorry, know? what? Yeah, yeah, you heard me right. Free dessert for life as long as you're an active subscriber. So all you have to do is go to homechef.com slash WWB. That's homechef.com slash WWB for 18 free meals and free dessert for and free dessert life. people. Homechef.com slash WWB. Get your desserts. Wait, I want to talk about Kid 90 though. So then. Yes, then we need to. So on Hulu, you had this amazing, it was a documentary, right? I mean, it's, yes. And it's like 
so you used to videotape everything like all growing up you always had a video camera with you or around you right and you were like in new york city with the kind of like skate boys and like all these videos like with huge celebrities hollywood things going on and you videotaped everything and you recently a few years ago went through i mean i know this has been a passion project for you for the longest time and just digging through these tapes and trying to figure out what this show could be and i know you had like three different iterations of what it could be but tell us about what it ended up being that people can see Oh, thank you. So I I grew up my entire life loving to document everything. From the time I was five years old, I had diaries. Twelve years old, I had audio recording, you know, thing. And um, and then my video camera. And I just felt like we were in such a colorful world, and I wanted to drink it all in. And so I documented my my friends growing up, all of us growing up together, uh, and then locked it away in Tupperware. Uh, it was literally in Tupperware for, <laughs> for years upon years. I was so protective over friends. And, and also we had gone through so much and lost some of the people closest to us um, during those years. And so I, I think anytime I thought about going back, just, it was, it was so painful to even, you know, kind of revisit. So then after many, many years, you know, I also remember that there was so much joy and I was like, wait, I, I there was so much joy in, in this moment in time in which I was really, I realized on a subconscious level, like I was also going through this process of like, you know, I have this incredible family, these beautiful children, like who am I in addition to them? You know, I think we all go through these different stages in life and our evolution, you know, at different times um, where, you know, it's that that search of oneself. And so really it served as like this, this blueprint into who I once was and and who I really am at my core. And so it was, it was quite a healing process. It started though, where I thought we were making a documentary about the last decade, you know, pre- um, internet explosion. So it was supposed to be like the death of privacy. It ended up essentially being like the end of my privacy in that way, you know, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, it went through so many iterations. It was so many different versions until really through that process of peeling back the onion, it became incredibly personal. And, uh, my dream was that people would connect to it and, and in a way be able to connect to their own, teen self and, and, um, their own and that time period, right? And I mean, yeah, and, time is, period and, and just for it to be nostalgic. And I'm so grateful that people responded to it so beautifully. And the support that we've had on kid 90 has just been amazing. And people and really are you, made it. Wrong. Are you talking about maybe a sequel? We're talking about it. We're okay. talking about it. I'm you know, there is a lot of story treasure troves of footage for days. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Well, and I, you had me on tape recording something for it, but the whole project shifted. Well, to it totally, else. yeah. I mean, yeah. literally, we went through so many iterations. I mean, there was the version that we first did where it was, again, it was like, you know, what it was like to live, you know, before the internet, you know, and it was like a totally right. different documentary. Then it became it took her where years I, to edit. I remember you being like, years. are you going to put it out there? Are you going to yeah, put it out no, there? It was, like, I don't know. Then I, yeah, then I cut a full, we did a full found footage one where there was no interviews. It was all found footage. Then wow. it went through, I mean, it just really was such a um, process of discovery. But it's like, there's this saying that I love so much. And it says, you know, if you make the documentary that you set out to make, you weren't really listening. Uh, and so I think, you know, that's part of the incredible journey of making documentaries is how they evolve. Well, and you have some people behind the scenes that you're friends with that like really helped out with that no documentaries and helped out a little, right? Like people you leaned into. We won't name any names if you don't oh, want. Yeah, yeah, we can name names. Or, yeah, I mean, just incredible, incredible support system. I mean, the, and the people that supported you were like Leonardo DiCaprio, Sean Penn, right? Didn't they like all take a look and like kind of- Incredible, incre in incredible support system, incredible helped, like, support system. Yeah. Appy, Appy in a way um, came on to it. Sean, I mean, literally just so, so much support and love. Um, and then the incredible musicians, you know, Linda Perry with her brilliant score, uh, Eddie Vedder, you know, and Jill giving their music, Trent Reznor. I mean, just, it Wait, was- Wait, Trent, uh, excuse me, excuse me. I <laughs> what? 
You, you know, like Nine Inch Nails was like, he let me use one of his songs because the song was in the footage. You, you have know? his and, number? Do you want me to call and, him? I Can did write him, him a letter. I wrote him a letter about how important his song was to the the doc. And did I write him a letter? Um, I think I did when I was twelve. Uh, Can no, I write him a the, letter? The, this, <laughs> this song was actually in the footage in the background, and um, and it was just the, the amount of love and support and goodwill around this documentary. Like, it makes me really emotional. It just um, it's it was beautiful. Just, and I hope everybody was, sees it. But I want to go back to the Trent Reznor thing. Hold on. <laughs> so, like, do you remember that in my what what Mark called my um my Smurfette mobile, my long blue baby blue jack? Like, I always had a a a, a nine inch nails hanging from my mirror. Yes, the nine inch. I nails. always had the nin like air freshener that had been in my car for ten years. Like, yes. that was whenever my roommate Angelo would drive my car, he'd take it down. He was embarrassed. He's like, I'm not putting that up. And I'm like, excuse me, you drive my car, you have to represent nine inch nails. I'm sorry. <laughs> so anyway, I didn't realize that that's a, that Trent, like, okay. Uh, I'm very, yeah. I'm going to go back and watch well, it again now. Well, what, you know, what, what I'm saying now, now Trent's going to be like, wait, what happened? <laughs> no, but I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. The musicians who supported me using the music in this piece. They let you use their music in the incredible. And yeah, they, they yeah, that's amazing. amazing. I mean, and, you, and did, the, you had a ton of support. Yeah, it was, and you, ton of and, and I mean, you put it together so beautifully. And I really feel like you could get three more movies out of this. <laughs> so I hope you. you do. I mean, there is such, there is the endless treasure trove of 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 archival and and also just. I think when you when you're doing what you love, like I love making documentaries so much, and I mm. love I love making scripted also, and and um, there's just something about being able to share stories that is is so beautiful and part of the human condition that I really love and am drawn to. And and so that feeling of purpose is really exciting and and I'm so grateful for it. Well, and we're I'm gonna ask you some of these questions we ask everybody, but um to talk about like what you binge, but well I, I haven't I haven't binged anything for so long. That's all right. That's, That's okay. all right. Wait, tell it tell us real quick where's where can people find Sunny Boy? I want people to watch Sunny Boy. Sunny Boy I am ready to take it, you know, I haven't taken it out yet. I tend to sit oh, on really? things sometimes for decades. Uh, <laughs> that is that yeah. that always, but I did, but I did, I, I did, I did wait. And, and, and now I think, I think the time is right to share it with the Tell world. Tell Amanda I'm, what Sunny Boy is about real quick. Like give us the log line. My, my dad and I um, drove, so my dad, uh, as he was in the earlier stages of Alzheimer's, um, we went cross country to retrace his history. And wow. um, which is a rich history. I mean, he was part of like the very, March over yeah, Selma rights movement like, and and incredible um, civil rights activist and and boxer and had worked um, with Dennis Hopper on Easy Rider. And so really, it was this wow. incredible journey across the country in this time that I was able to um, share with him. And, and so, yeah, it was a really incredible experience. And then I think just the pain around, you know, having a parent that was was struggling um, with this. It, it was something where I kind of, you know, said, okay, let me take a moment. And then a moment turned a year. And now, now it's like, okay, it's, it's time. It's, it's been How a few decades. Been? How long? You finished that decade. movie when? A decade? Yeah. It's time to put it out there so people can see it. No, Sean says that too. He's like, so like, it's time. <laughs> Let's go. Get it out there. Um, it sounds okay, like a real journey, you. though. I can't wait to see it. And then when I come back, it's I have to talk about the next documentary, which is oh, so. is there a new one? Is yeah, one? we'll Can have you talk to about talk it? about it the next on the next on the I next ever saving it on the next, next podcast we do. It's next episode. It's really, really, we're not really waiting cool. this long again, though. I mean, yeah, exactly. literally since the moment we started this podcast, Melissa's been saying we're gonna have Soleil on. We're gonna well, do it. We were waiting like, till we could have be together, and it never really happened. So we were like, forget it. We'll just do it on Zoom. Oh, um, well, I'm really excited. But I'm really, okay, wait. So excited about the the latest one. And yeah, can you tell us the name or anything? No, it's it, you know it's it's a story of of love, and um, it starts as a music documentary and turns into a love story, and it's heart wrenching and beautiful and moving what? and inspiring. And I just hope that people connect to it in the way that I do. Wow. I can't wait. <laughs> I know that's <laughs> fun. It's got All right, we've got story. questions for you. All right. Um, well, first of all, what are you binging? What do you like? What are you, movies, TV? Are you watching the Oscar movies? What do you? 
Oh my goodness, so you like, guys. Reading, I, podcasting. So here's the moving. thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing. I, I've been in the edit on this doc. We've been in this the edit the last month. So you know, Melissa, that when you're in the edit stage, it's like living and breathing and drinking it up and every minute, every minute, every moment. Now, with that said, so that has like been like a huge, you know, huge part of my life. And, you know, I love documentaries. And so when I'm binging, I'm usually, you know, binging docs. Um, with that said, um, I love to meditate. So a lot of my time is like spent, you know, taking in, I love books on physics and spirituality and um, love and enlightenment. And I would well, say there's something that I, I would say my equivalent of binging is that sometimes... I like uh -oh. going to like, this is a totally different kind of binge, but I think it's funny because I don't think it's talked about a lot, which is like on Instagram, like I'm so into manifesting, right? So I go into those things and it's like, you don't know if it's like human or an AI, but they give you like readings and stuff. Or do you know what I'm talking about? Does anyone know yeah, what I'm yeah. talking about? Okay. So like the thing that's like, there's someone special who's thinking about you, you know? And then, um, <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about on Instagram? Like the for you thing? I mean, maybe oh, you're like, 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 yeah, yeah. to you, whatever. Like, yeah, like yeah, it'll have like, it'll have like tarot readers or you know, like psychic, right. you know, psychic, it's psychic feeding messages. you, whatever. So I love to binge the messages on there, like the enlightenment. Oh my gosh. So that would be like if I binge on anything, I would say, um, you know, and I don't spend a lot of time on social media these days, but if I go on, it's like, I find myself get sucked into this rabbit hole. I'm like, how do you know? How do you do know? So I, so anyway, so that is, um, that is, uh, not that I binge it, but it is something. But you're also binging colleges because poets going off to college. You're also, yeah. you, uh, both of our kids are like 16 this week. So like we have to plan 16 Gosh. birthdays. We just did, then, yeah, we just did the college tour. That's been amazing. Just got back. I mean, our kids are exactly, our first two are exactly the same age. And then I have 11 and then Story and Lyric are how old? Story and Lyric are 10 and seven, almost eight. A little so bit crazy. younger than Tucker, but yeah. So that's and, my and today. So I, I have an 11 and two eight-year-olds. So. What so are they wild. binging? What do they watch? Do you have to watch stuff with them? Like so, oh my kids. Oh, well, they just um, so it's it's great. You know, they they're really into the classics. So, like re recently, I know like they were watching Felicity, uh, you know, like oh. the old school shows, Dawson's, you know, and then and then we're by the way, we're constantly binging like 80s movies. So to be totally yeah. honest, like the other, like we do um we do movie nights. So um, so like Jerry Maguire, we watched recently, um, fast times, you know what I mean? Like we definitely have our, you know, movie night yeah. rituals, 16 candles. Um, yes. yeah. So we definitely, that, that would be like our equivalent of binging is like family time together, movie nights, you know, doing that. Yeah. That's Brady just made me go on um, winter break. He went on like a Batman kick. He watched every Batman oh, movie. Right. I, I only watched the Michael Keaton one, but I like kind of popped in for some of the others. But I just think it's weird that someone else is Batman besides Michael Keaton. I mean, even though it's been like Val Kilmer and the, the, like, I was I'm like say, there's been like 20. You got to. So like, I mean, the, kid, the kids, the kids, like the kids binge a lot. Like the other day I walked into one of my kids rooms and I was like, what are you watching? They're like, oh, The Bachelor, you know, or, uh, or, or another, you know, Love another Island. one of Another Mason watches with our babysitter Love Island. <laughs> uh, my, my other daughter, like the crown, like is like she's been, you know what I mean? So the, the kids all have their, you know, story. Oh, it's like, you know, amazing YouTube videos, you know, Lyric. Are you having a sweet 16? Is Jagger she having a sweet 16? She wants to have a sweet 16. It's, it's, we're, we're having the discussion, you know, it's, it's up for discussion for sure. It's like, Amanda way, just threw one if you need some tips. Amanda way, yeah. threw a sweet 16 last week. It's, it's, a, week, it's a week and a half from now. And, uh, yeah. And, and anyway, <laughs> but you but can pull, Lyric, if anyone can pull it Lyric, together, you can. Lyric loves, like, he loves, like, um, Chaplin. And, you know, he, I mean, literally, he watches, you know, these incredible old films. So, anyway. I died. That's awesome. You know. All right, wait, I'm going to ask you the questions now. Ready? These are our season 10. I guess we're still in season 10, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope so. 
Um, here's our question. So is there a movie you feel you should have watched, but you haven't yet? Oh, that's such a great question. Like, have you ever seen like, Ooh, Citizen I've got to think that I've, pardon <laughs> Lawrence of Arabia, Citizen Kane, like something like classic that maybe I've, I've met a lot of people recently who have never seen, um, it's a wonderful uh, life. It's a wonderful no, life. I've seen. I've seen. It's a wonderful life. But does that? Yeah. It? I'm like, how do you not see that movie? It doesn't even make sense to me. Is that what you were gonna say? Yeah. Did yeah. You know? Everybody. I've heard like three people recently tell me they've never seen that movie, and I'm it's like, it's so funny <laughs> because the movie that comes to my mind is a movie that I love, which is Casablanca. <laughs> you know, it's like I love Casablanca. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's your classic. Um, that's right. We'll skip it. Is there a TV <laughs> villain that you love to hate? Oh boy, that I love. <laughs> See, you're gonna. I gotta think on that one too. I've, I've got to think on these. A TV binger. It would require watching TV, and she TV, is yeah. not there right now. It's like it All requires. Right, this one's good. You'll get this one. Favorite book genre, although you may have already told us. Oh, I, there's so many that I love. Um, you know, I love Kerouac. I love um the whole Beat Generation. I love I love Anais and Nin, Henry Miller. I love erotica. I love um. I love spiritual, you know, books. I I, I love um, Ram Dass. I, I, you know, it, it just The Prophet is one of my favorite books of all time. So um, it crosses, crosses. Yeah. So Amanda is really into werewolf. What is it again? She's back into this. She was into this like a they're, year ago. She's back into it. werewolf novels. Yeah, no, I, I've heard. Is this like my girlfriend's obsessed with the dragon ones? Also, yeah. They're oh. like, yeah, yeah. Those are great. You know about these dragon ones? They're yes. Um, is that the house of something in thorns or something? Yeah, roses yes. and thorns and yes, yes. yes. I, yes. Need to, I, need to, I feel like I would They're really phenomenal. like those. You can get them. <clears throat> excuse me. Look at she got choked up everywhere now. <laughs> no, the werewolves they get me every time. <laughs> <laughs> the movie I'm working on right now. Somebody's reading one of those books. I saw it laying around. I was like, I need to. I need to. And I went to the airport and on my way here and like there was a they whole world like. I was like, I, I'm going to need to read these. Yeah, they're phenomenal. You will not regret it. Great so, like, stories, maybe we do that. Reads. Yes, we let's do, that do together. it. And by the way, I thought about someone, a character that you love to not like, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, mm -hmm. James Spader. See, I'm so obsessed with 80s movies. James Spader, Pretty in Pink. Yes. Oh, right. That's a right? good one. That's a good one. That's a yeah. good yeah. villain. Good choice. Good choice. That's true. My, that is but you kind of do like it a little. <laughs> well, right. He's like, yeah, but you're just That's like, fun. oh, I want to just, oh, but he's so. I don't like him, but ooh. Yeah. But, right. Right. I think that was the <laughs> one. <laughs> so mean, what's your go-to karaoke I song? I mean, we could talk about some. Uh, Big Little Lies has some of those folks too. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I, that's yeah. I keep that's it, true. Go-to karaoke song, Soleil. I can't remember. I want to be able to. Go to karaoke song. I want to be able to come up with it myself for oh, you. I... Um, well, for sure, Human League, it would probably be Don't You Want, you know, Don't You Want oh, Me? Oh, <laughs> that's a good yes. one. Yes, for sure. That's Why so you? I mean, that one? Human I feel League. Like you need to for do sure. Born on Blondes, though. Oh, I, I, why not? By the way, it was so funny. I texted Linda when we were on the road. Everywhere we went on the college road trip, for the most part, like, we would be at like, we went to the Kings game and be like, you know, you'd start oh, yeah. hearing, this, you know, like Ford on Blondes was on. Then we go to like upstate New York. I was like, wow, Linda, you are like everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> I guess so All right. What is a reboot? Like <laughs> What's a what? reboot that you liked better than the original? Oh, come on. You can't say Punky uh, Brewster. Not, oh. Yeah, Punky doesn't count. <laughs> as much as the original. How about that? Punky as much. Okay. As much. Okay. Is there a um, reboot that you like better, like a like a Batman I mean, movie, or the new Sabrina, or the new Wonder Year? Wait, what? Or I'm kind of a classic girl, you guys. Yeah, I know. That's Ghostbusters. Fair. You know, I'm I'm I pretty. Know. Right, let's move on. Hold on. We, reboots are hard. Um, first concert. You guys are like, so, okay. what? First concert. Oh, that's a great one. ACDC. Oh, ah, what? I was like First four years ever? old. I was like four oh, years old and my mom took me to an ACDC concert. <laughs> and, oh my gosh. You guys, okay. So ACDC concert. And it was so wild because there was this thing called the Us Festival, which was 
crazy, you guys. I mean, literally, you may have to pull up the lineup on this show to show like the kind of people that were there. It was so bananas, you guys. It was like in the middle. It was so funny because I was I was actually having a conversation. Um, I love Perry Farrell and Etty and their dear friends. And he like we've talked about how like so many of like the festivals were born out of this us festival. You guys, it was like rock and roll and heavy metal and like crazy bands. Okay. But there was thousands upon thousands of thousands of people. And you guys, you had to like trudge through mud and people were going to the bathroom everywhere. It was the craziest, like it was. Have you not so gone to Burning fun. Man? Have you gone to Burning it, Man? This is like, you're this describing like, Bonnaroo. This was like the <laughs> motorcycle era of Burning Man. Okay. And literally I'm telling you, I'm like four years old, like trudging through the mud, you know, like just like, it was so insane. Oh. Literally. It was like 19, I don't even know, the early 80s. We got to look it up. It was anyone that experienced the US Festival will, if you know, you know. Yeah. Uh, that's all I well, we'll, we'll have to go look that up. We'll go look that up. All and right. I have one more thing I have to ask you. There was insane. Do you have <laughs> your phone near you? Yes. You have, okay. So tell me that little red dot next to emails. What does that little red dot say? 27,720. Yeah, you guys are on the same team. You too. She's team I'm, Amanda. I'm at 28, you guys. I'm at 28, and I'm so proud. I'm holding on. Okay. I'm wait, wait, 28, wait, 28,000 or 28? 28. 28. She's at just 28. I unread emails. 27,000 is a lot, right? No, it's a lot. Emails. And she's got, what do you have, Amanda? 39,216. It's insane. You guys are insane. We we, we had someone on recently that was like 80,000. I'm like, I don't understand. You have a type, you... Melissa. Look at us. Yeah. Your hot mess. Your friends, that's so are. crazy. What well, is? But that kind of gives that kind of that's kind of stressful. <laughs> exactly. Well, but don't you that's have a system? You probably don't miss very many emails, do you? I probably do. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, know. you guys, you guys, you guys. This is what I'll do. Also, which is really like if I'm like, oh, I didn't. This is this. I don't know if this ever happens to you. And maybe this is way <laughs> oversharing. But I'll be like, oh, I didn't hear from so-and-so and and then I'll be like, oh, let me just look at what I sent. And then there'll be an email from them that I never saw. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, oh "Oh my God. But but then like so much time has passed. You know what I mean? Like I'll do that with text messages too. Like say I texted somebody. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I haven't heard back. And then like I go to like, just look at what I sent Mm -hmm. and be like, are you good? And I'm like, oh my God, they fully wrote to me but now like it's been like weeks and now like we're gonna have a sidebar on this conversation i'm gonna help you okay we're gonna i'm gonna help you or hire one of your kids change you is what she's gonna do just give like your kid like a (laughs) hundred bucks to go through your inbox and only save the you know delete anything that's from any online (laughs) shopping blah 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 blah, junk mail crap well so thank you so much for being here oh my god i love you so when you have your documentary out you have to come back Yes. yes. And I'm going to think, you know, I'm, I'm going to think on all the things that I binge and I will have watched some TV again by the you time I have to watch it for us. It's fine. No, you told us you binge all we do movies. binge. We binge eighties movies. We binge. Yeah, we're interested in what you're binging. So yeah, if it's meditations meditate. or whatever it is, that's great. We had, we had a wrestler on here who was like, I'm a shoe junkie. Like I'm obsessed with shoe. Like, and that was enough, you know? Oh, yeah. There you go. Well, Yes. I love you. Thank you. Mwah, 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 I love mwah. you. And happy Sweet Sixteen to Jagger. Thank and I'll you talk and to you, see you, honey. I love you. I love you. Bye, you guys. Womanette. What? Womanette binge.